All right, you guys, this is Ross. So today's video, we're gonna look at my citrus trees. And these are a couple trees here that I brought in for the winter. And they're kind of serving as house plants um, because you really treat them as an outdoor potted plant, an outdoor patio plant um, in the spring, the summer, and the fall. But then when temperatures start to dip below 40, it's a really good idea to start bringing them inside. Um, and they kind of act and serve as a house plant. Um, you know, they can obviously handle a light frost, but uh, for the most part, if you're going to be growing citrus in a colder climate like myself, this is just something you got to do. And I have a couple tips I want to show with you, guys, share with you guys in this video. Also, we'll take a look at my kumquat tree back here, and also this this lime quat tree because they do have some fruits on them that uh, are ripening right now, and I'm pretty excited about that. It's mid January. And I actually have some fresh fruit. So that's really, in my opinion, one of the best things about growing citrus. If you're trying to have fruit all year round or some sort of uh, fresh food, this is definitely something you wanna invest in. I'd also probably argue something really good to grow like a citrus tree would be um, a loquat. Because like the, lo like the citrus, the loquats will fruit usually in the, su in the winter time or in the spring when there is no fruit. Uh, I do have another suggestion, which is the persimmon. Different varieties of persimmons that are quite late, um, or they have a better ability to hang on the tree. You can actually have persimmons well throughout the winter time. Uh, there are some that will ripen in March. There's some that uh, continue to ripen on the tree, continue to hang on the tree, and just get sweeter and sweeter. So for me, I think uh, it's pretty hard to beat a lot of these trees, but the citrus is always going to have a home for me simply because I love having fresh limes, fresh lemons. Um, I like these kumquats quite a bit. This is an Australian finger lime here. Um, and if I can really, you know, try to make it work, I'd love to have sweet citrus in the wintertime. It's just very difficult to get sweet citrus when you don't have colder temperatures at night. Those chill hours really sweeten the fruit. And if I've got them here in my house indoors, it's kind of difficult to get sweeter citrus. So if you're really just starting out with this, I would highly suggest that you guys only stick with the sour citrus types. So like lemons, limes, kumquats are relatively easy. But overall, a citrus tree in this climate, I would argue is quite difficult. It's a quite difficult hurdle to get over. Uh, once you get over the hurdle, I think it's relatively easy. I still mess up to, the, to this day. Like these trees are still quite young and they're not as established as I'd like them to be. And therefore, it's pretty easy to mess up. Uh, once you get over that hurdle of getting a tree established after maybe two or three years in a pot, you can then have something that's not only going to produce a lot of fruit, but it's also a really beautiful house plant. And I have actually one in my bedroom that's I think six years old. I mean, I've been growing citrus now as long as I've been growing figs, almost. And that citrus tree, believe it or not, doesn't have any fruit on it, but it's gorgeous. And the reason it doesn't have any fruit on it is because me not really understanding where the graft union was on some of these trees. In fact, even on these younger trees, I don't even necessarily know where the graft union is, but for sure on that, that uh, Satsuma mandarin tree that I supposedly have. In fact, I think actually the rootstock has taken over and I've either pruned out the, the mandarin or um, you know something else had happened, maybe even the nursery messed up at some point. But the point is, is that the tree hasn't fruited in like six plus years and that's a really common mistake. Even a friend of mine who's relatively new to this because I've made the mistake myself, I looked at his tree and I said, oh my God, you know, Matt, your half your tree is actually your rootstock. The other half of your tree is what is the variety of kumquat that he was trying to grow for his cocktails. So he had to prune out like half of his tree. It was really upsetting because he, he thought his tree was doing so well uh, when in fact it was being overtaken by the rootstock. So, you know, I think overall, like I said, if you get past some of these hurdles, like knowing the difference between the rootstock and the scion and what's on top, right? The biggest way I can tell at this point is the different leaf patterns, right? If you notice two different leaf patterns on your tree, one of them is gonna be the, the rootstock, one of them is gonna be the scion wood here. 
that's supposed to fruit. Now the rootstock, just like if you planted a seed, it's gonna take forever to fruit. That's why my tree that's six years old still doesn't have fruit on it. It's not a total loss, because what I've decided is that I'm gonna actually do some grafting this year. Uh, I'm gonna graft probably a couple of these varieties here. These are my younger trees. We also just ordered a couple uh, more trees from Four Winds. Um, maybe we'll do an unboxing video when they come in May. But I've actually done an unboxing video on these younger trees here about a couple years ago when we got them from Four Winds. And I have to say, they've been doing really, really well. So here's my keys to success. Um, first off, you gotta keep them pest free. And it's quite difficult, especially when you get them from a nursery, they're probably gonna have some sort of pest on them. It's almost inevitable. I don't care what nursery it is. There may have some scale on them. They may have some spider mites. They may have something else that you just can't see. You could either drench the tree with some sort of soap or neem or insecticide. It's probably in your best interest. If you have a really good bug ecology outside when you receive them in the spring, also probably wouldn't get a citrus tree in a colder climate unless it was in the spring. You don't wanna get these, through, these guys through the winter time indoors if they're not already relatively established. The first year you bring them in is always quite tricky and can be quite difficult. So for me, that first year is all about feeding them, keeping them healthy, giving them enough water, and getting them as established in their pot as possible. The best way you're gonna do that is one, through a foliar spray or constant feedings. And then two is actually the soil. It's all in the soil, guys, because if you can get that super well-draining soil with these trees, they're gonna love it. And if you don't really probably wanna put them in a large pot too soon, the root systems are quite fibrous. Um, you know, they can get a bit thicker, but the roots are very prone to root rot. So if you are putting them in a large pot too soon, too much water, too much wet soil, you're gonna regret it. Your trees are not gonna grow very well. You're gonna have more anaerobic soil. It's just not a good idea. And then when you bring them inside in the winter time now, they're not gonna be very healthy. If they did have flowers, if they did have fruit on them, they're gonna drop the fruits. It's kind of a mess. This tree here, this Australian finger lime, actually bloomed twice. The first time it bloomed was when I brought it outside in the spring last year in 2020 and it had tons of scale on it just because that's just the normal process, right? You get the trees, they always have some sort of pest on them. As Soon as I brought them outside, actually the ladybugs attacked this tree and ate up all the scale. As Soon as the scale disappeared, the flowers unfortunately didn't set fruit because it didn't have the energy to hold onto those fruits. It was already kind of so uh, messed up as it was because of the scale but it continued to grow and then actually it flowered again at some point in the summer. And uh, again, it didn't hold on to the fruits, but it looks a lot healthier now and it's a way better, it's way better off probably. And it's a good thing almost that this tree now got itself established because you can see here on the left is another young tree that's just as young as this Australian finger lime. This is a Eustace lime quat, which by the way, I don't recommend this variety. We'll talk about the fruits here in a minute, but it had about four or five lime quats on it this year and last year. So by putting all this fruit on it, it really hasn't established itself very well. And therefore it's just as this kind of a shame because I could have something like this or even larger, like this kumquat back here, but it looks kind of runty and puny because of really all the fruit that I've, uh, I've let it uh, develop. So that's kind of where we're at with these young trees. And it's, uh, you know, now they're getting established in their pots. I think a 10 gallon size is about the right size you want. You could probably do a step up from here. So, you know, get it in a one gallon, then a five, then a, then a 10. Definitely they're not fully rooted out in these tens, which is, not ideal, but it worked for me um, because I have such well-draining soil. So let me give you guys a little close-up here because we do have some fruits that I would like to eat and show you guys. Because look at this this kumquat here. I got all these trees, by the way, at the same the same day. They were the same age, the same height, the same rootstock. By the way, a lot of these trees you buy 
are going to be grafted and they're going to be on a rootstock that's usually dwarf or semi-dwarf. I per personally prefer the semi-dwarf. If you get something a little bit more vigorous than a flying dragon, you are going to uh, appreciate that more. And I think Four Winds actually, I contacted them about their particular rootstock that they used on these because I really, really like these in terms of them getting more established than I have in the past from, let's say, other nurseries. Even Four Winds, I think the, the semi-dwarf is a much better rootstock uh, for getting them established quicker. And as you can see, uh, like in their, their second year now that I've gotten them, uh, this will be, I think, man, I think it was 2018 in the spring I received them. So they grew an entire year, then they grew a second year. Yeah, so this year coming up, when it becomes spring and it finally gets warm outside, <laughs> um, this will be their third year. And this is really good. This one here worked out super well, this kumquat. And it had about 40 to 50 fruits on it. Unfortunately, I still make mistakes. I don't pay too much attention to these trees and I did not water it for too long of a period. Um, and therefore, these, this tree got a little bit drought stressed, dropped some leaves. You can see they started curling up like this and even some of the fruits really didn't appreciate it. Like probably this one I have here in my hand. But overall, the tree is gonna be fine. Um, I love how established this thing is. Continue the feedings, by the way, while you're indoors, if you can. I like to give them some slow release on the soil. I don't think I did that this year, but there was so much in there to begin with. And I've been feeding these trees relentlessly this summer, and it really paid off. Um, so here's some lime quats from the variety Eustace. Here are some of the kumquats. What my plans are is I'm gonna eat some of these fresh. Like right now, I'm gonna take a bite of this, this kumquat. They're really quite good. And I would really highly recommend them as a nice fresh eating snack. Um, for anybody that's interested, you know, growing them as something like this, so you can have fruit for a longer period of time, let's say all year, right? So I think the kumquat's really good. I'm just gonna get these seeds out of my mouth, but this variety down here is called Fukushu. Really impressed with it. Now, what I may end up doing, because I don't really like the Eustace lime quat. I'm gonna take off a couple fruits here because they're they're ready as well. So here's the three fruits. I actually harvested another one or two, I think, uh, a couple weeks ago. But these are essentially <clears throat> not a big fan of these. They kind of remind me, even though they're a lime quat, a cross between a kumquat and a lime, they don't remind me of either one. And they say you're supposed to be able to eat this or use it like a lime or eat it like a kumquat. I'll take a bite out of this. And that'll be like a decent comparison between these kumquats and also the lime quat. Let's try it. Okay. Hmm. So. What is weird about this fruit is that it does remind me a lot of a kumquat, but it's very lemony. In fact, you could use this really as a lemon. Um, it's so tart. Whereas this kumquat here is not as tart. Um, it's definitely sweeter. Obviously the rind on this is pretty sweet, but let me try this. This kumquat here. It's just a more pleasant eating experience, personally. 
obviously they're both very sour, very tart. But what my plans are, I think with both of these fruits, is I'm gonna try making a marmalade this year. Just like you would make jam, essentially. We're gonna make these guys into a marmalade and see what happens. I've never done it. Never even eaten a marmalade before. But, yeah, it shouldn't be uh, too difficult. If you can make jam, I'm sure you can make a marmalade. I don't know, so far I'm really impressed by these citrus trees. And uh, we've ordered more. I ordered a, a lemon, a lime, and a calamundin, which is another type of kumquat. And I'm gonna be making things like marmalades, using the limes and lemons and cooking. We have this uh, really beautiful, and it's just growing so well, this Australian finger lime. These will be for different things, maybe cocktails, putting them on food, you know, you get those pop rocks that are really so awesome. Overall, really uh, loving the citrus and I can't wait to grow more of them. Can't wait to have maybe even one of these in the ground somewhere uh, underneath the greenhouse. And yeah, I, we've done other videos now guys about bringing these in for the winter, about growing them indoors, growing them outdoors, etc., etc. Check out those other videos guys, hit that subscribe button for me. If you have a citrus tree you recommend growing in a colder climate, let me know. Uh, we have the Fukushu. We're gonna do some grafting. Um, we have this Eustace lime quat, like as I said, the Australian finger lime. We ordered a Bears, I think, a Lisbon, and the Calamundin. And I thought about some others, but maybe you guys have some uh, additional varieties I should consider. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care, everybody. Stay safe.